Hello, my name is Martha Flores and these are my speaker notes. And I will begin. How must it feel to have a you trapped inside of you that can get out at any second without you having any recollection of it ever happening? Mental health issues have been easier to talk about more than ever, but there is still so much more that we can learn. If we are not informed, we will not be able to help a family member or a friend because we will miss those signs. I was a recent psychology major that studied mental disorders for about a semester, specifically personality disorders. DID is a potentially debilitating mental health issue that changes a person's way of life. Today, I'm going to be talking about what is DID or a dissociative identity disorder, how it looks like, how it's diagnosed, and its treatment. First, let me explain what is DID and how does it look like. Dr. Smitha Bandari from the University of Michigan reviewed an article and where she went on to explain that DID is a severe form of dissociation. This looks like a, for example, there is a lack of connection with their self identity. They have no connection with their emotions, thoughts, and feelings. Their DID is a defense mechanism that is result from severe trauma that happened during childhood, usually between the ages of four to nine. And trigger warning, this is usually because of sexual abuse or physical abuse that happened during early childhood. David Spiegel, a medical doctor from the University of Stanford University, went on to explain that DID is usually seen in two forms, possession and non-possession. Possession is where an outsider can usually physically see that there's two different people kind of in the same body. Non-possession is a very small changes like in feelings and emotions, and usually the person is the one that can see these differences and other people usually cannot. Mostly for the rest of my speech, I will be talking about possession. Cleveland Clinic explained in their article of dissociative identity disorder that DID is a chronic and debilitating because of the symptoms it causes. First, and one of the biggest ones is amnesia. There is a memory gap for these people because in different identities, they are just not able to recollect what the other person did. For example, if somebody asks me, hey, what did your neighbor do last week? I'll be like, I have no idea. It's kind of the same way. They have memory gaps. Because of the different changes and just they just don't know when it's gonna happen again, this causes depression and anxiety for these people. The biggest, and I think the one that most people see in movies and everything is the alters, right? It's where these identities are called alters. Um, you can see that there is different ones and the process of them switching is called switching. A great example of this is the movie called Split. I don't know if anybody has seen it or maybe you've seen a small clip of it, but it the main character has a couple of like different identities. One of them is like a child, a mother figure, an adult, and then the beast. And if you are talking to him, you can sometimes see the switch of him changing like completely different person, right? That's a switch. If you want to see like an example of what DID looks like, that would be a great movie to watch. Now that we know what DID is and how it looks like, let's talk about how it's diagnosed. Dr. Bandari went on to explain that the process is long and a psychiatric review is needed and done by a psychiatric and the criteria is also very specific. First, the person must have two or more identities, right? The psychiatric needs to be able to see that there's two or more different identities in one person, right? And they're completely different personality, different way of speaking, everything. This person also has to have amnesia, right? If they keep on asking them questions about what they did and they're not able to recollect any information, then that is their amnesia, the memory gap that is caused by DID. Dr. Spiegel also went on to explain that this process can also be made very difficult because they need to make sure that these symptoms are not caused by medications or substance abuse because medications can have bad side effects and substance abuse can have bad trips. This process is also made difficult because there are people that sometimes fake these symptoms in order to get the benefits of disability. And another thing that also makes it very difficult is the symptoms. Depression and anxiety can be seen in a couple of other different mental disorders. And so it's the process is very long to be able to clearly identify and distinguish between different mental disorders. Now that we have reviewed the process of diagnosing and how difficult it can be, let's look at the long-term treatments. 
The Cleveland, the Cleveland article explains that there is no cure for DID, but there are long-term treatments that can help. First is psychotherapy. And the goal of this, of talking therapy, is to be able to fuse all the identities into one and get back control. Hypnotherapy, which is uh, hypnosis, the goal of this is to reach those suppressed memories and try to find what the trigger is, and then hopefully if we can find the trigger, we can get better control of DID. Medications can be used, and they're prescribed in order to take care of depression and anxiety, because if that is managed, then DID will be easier to manage as well. Another great thing is a support system. If you just have friends and family that support you, that's what matters and helps a lot. In conclusion, DID is a severe form of dissociation that just creates daily challenges for everyday life. We have reviewed the definition, how it looks like, the diagnosing, and the treatment for DID. DID takes control of somebody's life. A new identity can emerge at any second to protect this person from a past event. These people have lost the reins to their identity and with some help and support, hopefully these people can find themselves again.